In this tutorial, I'm going to walk you through the process of creating a blur effect in Flash. I have a simple scene with a bouncing basketball character, and I want to improve it by blurring his shadow and by adding a motion blur effect behind the character when he's moving quickly. First, select the object you want to blur. I'll start with his shadow. Convert the object into a symbol and give it a name. This next part is important. Make sure the type option for your symbol is set to movie clip. The filter options won't be available if you make it a graphic. Now that your object is a movie clip, make sure it's selected and find your filters panel. This might be a bit difficult to find. I'm using Flash CS5 so the Filters panel shows up in the Properties tab. In earlier versions of Flash, you need to manually enable it by going to the Window menu and selecting the Filters panel. Now that you have your Filters panel enabled and your object selected, click the New Filter button in the lower left of the Filters panel. It has the same icon as the New Layer button in the Timeline panel. You can't see it in this video, but a menu will pop up. From this menu, select the Blur option. This will add a blur filter to the movie clip. Now it's time to adjust the blur settings. You can blur objects either horizontally or vertically, or a combination of both. Since the shadow is in perspective, I'm going to blur it more horizontally than vertically. The quality setting lets you make the blur softer, but flash runs more slowly when you use a high quality blur. I recommend the low or medium quality for most things. Next I'm going to add the motion blur for the character. You can apply blur to drawings, symbols, or images. The only thing that matters is that they're symbolized as a movie clip. Again, convert the object into a symbol, give it a name, and make sure its type is set to movie clip. Find your filters panel again, either in the properties tab in CS5 or from the window menu in earlier versions. Add a blur effect and blur it in the direction of the motion. I'm going to speed this next part up as I fumble with the keyframes. Next, I'm going to animate the blur's alpha. This will let you make the symbol more transparent. It's the same as the opacity setting in Photoshop. I'm going to use this to fade the motion blur in and out. In your properties panel, there should be a section labeled color effect. Select alpha as the style. You can keyframe the alpha effect in the same way you do with an object's motion. Create your motion tween, then set the alpha value at each keyframe. The alpha effect is useful for effects such as cross dissolves. You can also keyframe the amount of blur in the same way. I'm going to use this to make the shadow sharper when the ball is near the ground and softer when he's in the air. I also keyframed the alpha value so that the shadow becomes more translucent. Here's the finished result. Ow! 